Welcome back everyone to the Nowscast. I'm your host Nows and today I have you here with me, someone who's been whining and crying about my extremely reasonable order of guests. It's him, the one and only, the golden god himself, Petrus Kusomotis, also known as a handsome bitch, author of the revered and genre-defining, critically acclaimed Daphne Greengrass and the Importance of Intent, as well as a plethora of other stories such as The Importance of Intent, After the Credits, The Best Kind of Weird, Hermione Granger and the Paradigm Shift, Learn to Fly, Married with Children, Live Forever, Traditions, Dwarves in the Castle, A Most Splendid Expedition, A One Night Stand in Three Acts, Three More Years, Three is a Magical Number, Of Fish, Chips and Salads, Brief Encounters, Underneath the Sky, The Harry Hermione Drabblepalooza, and my favorite one shot of all time and creation, Elephant. Thank you for joining us, Patrick. How are you today? No, I'm so great. Thank you for having me today. I just this is an amazing event. I never thought I'd get here. Do, do, does this thank. feel like a dream for you? I have I have a few people to thank. Of course, my family. Okay. Without <laughs> them, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> Secondly, the folks on uh, Salient Server ass. Yes. At my darkest moments, they were always there. They always <laughs> believed in me. Keys, Cap. There's too many to mention. Keys, Cap. Bip, of course. Those mm-hmm. are the ones that really come to mind. They were really there for me. Of course. Of and course. and finally, Sal, for apparently being busy tonight uh, and freeing up this spot. <laughs> it is great to be here. Uh, how do you say that? Well, straight face. I don't know. Uh, so... Let's start this. So how old were you and how long ago did you start with fan fiction as a reader? Like how did you find the uh, fan like how did you find fan fiction at all? And what were your first first stories and fandoms? So to be honest, it's been so long I cannot even remember when or how. Like a ballpark. Um, I read Five, the books ten years. I remember pardon? Like a ballpark, like ten years. Uh, more than ten years. So oh, I started. I, re- I started reading the books. Mm-hmm. I think right before the first movie came out. So I obviously they were a thing by then. That's twenty years and, ago. And I think the first four books were out by then. Okay. So I just decided to give them a shot, and I, I, I absolutely devoured the first four. Enjoyed the, and then Order of the Phoenix was the first one I uh-huh. bought when it came out. So I would guess that's when I. S- Probably read the Olympics, maybe a year or two after that, in between waiting. And um, did you start as Harry Potter fanfics or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would say mm. this is the only fandom that I've really been involved with. Okay. I've enjoyed Star Wars and things like that, but just, I, I hate to say it at a surface level, right? I enjoyed the movies and I didn't really do much beyond that, so. Yep. So, uh, the two big ones that I can remember, ironically, Paradigm of Uncertainty, which is a Harry uh-huh. Potter Hermione uh-huh. story, which is really big. Yeah, it's very and, famous. And one called After the End, I think I recommended that one to you, which is a Harry Ginny story. Um, which one? Sorry, I missed. After the End. After the End. The one... Uh, no, that's not the one. I was thinking about the... That Hermione... Harmony with that they are uh they escape this no they don't like draco helps them for fuck's sakes i can't remember the words <coughs> counterplay that's a new one yes 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 i thought oh, so this is like 20 years ago okay okay sort it out you're the host okay i'm sorry okay anyways those are the <laughs> two back that i could remember so i didn't mm-hmm. read a lot but i remember looking for i think when you I loved the book so much at that point. You're looking for anything, and there were so many opportunities. There were so many different ways it could have gone at that point, right? Mm-hmm. Now, especially after Goblet of Fire and Order of the Phoenix. Yeah, that's so, a, there's was, a lot of. That's probably to answer your question. It was just kind of like searching out <clears throat> that while you wait for that sixth book. And I, I wonder how the. Finale. I wonder how the fandom was back then. It was probably very uh, much smaller. No, I, I actually think it was the opposite. I think it yeah. was much bigger, to be honest with you. Um, and I think it's it was odd. I think people, authors and things were put on even more of a pedestal back then, which was very bizarre. I remember thinking it was bizarre back then. But, um, there was it, was, no, it was interesting. 
there was no fanfiction at, at the time, or was there? Sure, fiction fiction alley. Have you ever heard of that? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was massive. It was massive. I think in Porky uh, and uh, Sugar Quill, these are all. I think it was much bigger then than it is now. Not that it's not big now. Yeah, um, it's kind of more established, but it was. <coughs> it was. It was. Uh, it's, it was. It was, it was burning up, like it popping up, like yeah, yeah. I guess maybe that's what it was. It was that excitement of something new. Mm-hmm. That that it was growing at the time, and after and all these each new, new book, and everything, everything yeah. changed. Yeah, yeah, it must have been really nice. Yeah, but then I went away for forever, so that was like maybe one or two years that I was reading, uh-huh. and then you know, oh, you had kids a big and everything one. else, ah, and I just went okay. away from it. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, when did you go back then? Oh did- man. Maybe like a year or two, probably about a year before I wrote uh, in tech. So 2019, no, 2018, 2018 probably. 2018. Yeah, 2017, 2018. And again, I think it was I was literally sitting at home, uh-huh. remembering when I used to read stories and going, "Man, I bet there's a lot of good stuff out there now." That's been like six or seven. Years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I did still it. Here. Thank you. And fanfiction.net used to be there, so I think I started there. Okay. And did the classic sort by, you know, what oh, stories about the favorites and all that good stuff. And that never works. That's horrible. <laughs> Fan fiction on that should get their shit together and make a new it's search. Fine. People complain too much. We'll get to that. I think people complain too much. But anyways. Says the whiner. <laughs> so what made you jump from reader to writer for intent? Oh, man. So... To be just straight up, I never thought I would write. I'm I'm old. I'm in my 40s. I never thought I would write anything like this. So essentially what happened was I read a lot of different stories. Mm -hmm. And some of them, a lot of them I enjoyed, obviously. But things, it just kept in my head. And I think a lot of writers have this. If I wrote something, this is what I would want. This is what I would. I never found that story where it did everything I wanted it to do, right? It, it There was always something, not always, but most of the times I was thinking, there, or there's not enough of the stories that I like, right? Uh-huh. You I wish there were more of this sort of story. I wish they wouldn't always, when they get to this point, go this direction. Yeah. Um, you basically and, wrote what you wanted to read. Yeah, and but it was more than that. Then I got the idea for intent. Mm-hmm. And I thought, surely someone has written that before. So the idea of how they involved one. So that's what really sparked it. You can spoil. It's been a few years since it's finished. It's freaking fantastic, right? So it's anyways, amazing. they involved more <laughs> through Harry Scott. Yes. So I'd read a few where, you know, it kinda Harry happened. has sex with someone that he's in love with and that does it. And it, it yeah. But no, I, so I Google searched and I didn't found anything like that. So I thought, man, that would be a good idea for the story. I can't believe that hasn't been written. I would, um, sorry, go. And I would walk the dog, less than peace mattingly, and mm-hmm. I would keep thinking up parts of how that would work, right? Just unconsciously thinking or driving to work, what, wherever it was. And then I thought of the ending one day. I, that last chapter in the last section was the first thing I thought of in the last line. Which is also the first one, right? Basically. What's that? The first chapter, the the prologue with Daphne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it's basically I thought the first. of how it would end, and I went, oh, man, that would be cool if I started with her kind of giving you a presentation. Oh, and it yeah. With that. It's definitely good. Um, and Do you really, I hate when that happens. Little ideas coming together, and I was like, I should try to write this. Uh-huh. So I just sat down one day. I literally got done walking the dog on a Saturday, came in and wrote the prologue and uploaded it the next day or the day after that. And this kept going. Without an outline, anything? Uh, without an outline at the beginning. But I will tell you, I had already at that point been thinking of all these different pieces in the, in the, uh, that would be in it. So I didn't have the outline yet, but it was kind of sort of formed. Um, and then after I wrote the first one, and I think after the second one, I kind of realized I'm for work. I'm a very organized person. Mm-hmm. So after the first chapter, the first proper chapter, I realized I really need to 
freaking organize this. So I set up a calendar and I got everything plotted out. I think I was reading by the time you were uploading it. Like, I, I didn't pick up the intent uh, after it was finished. So I think I remember I had a pretty uh, consistent uh, update schedule. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, makes kinda, sense. And I. <laughs> I think I was very lucky to actually have that momentum the first time uh -huh. I'd ever written something, getting it out. So I I didn't have the pressure, I think, that happens if you wait a while mm -hmm. to worry and think and all that kind of stuff. So I just kept writing and writing and writing. And I, and I will say it was kind of one of the most enjoyable experiences of my life. You try something new. Uh, and get that much enjoyment out of it, and you're proud of it at the end. So, and considering, I think the, all of that kept me writing. Considering the fact that it was a major hit while it was being written, did it make you feel even better because of it, or like did it? Does the praise wash over you? Uh, see, I could lie and say, you know what, <laughs> I didn't write for that. I wrote for myself, and blah, which is true. That uh -huh. is 100% true, but there is something to be said for getting that momentum started, right? And being able to update once or twice a week and having that feedback uh -huh. and people asking you to keep to upload writing. and being able to do that and kind of fed on itself. Uh -huh. So it was, it was very nice. I bet. Uh, and it did help and it did keep me motivated. Um, did you feel overwhelmed by the pressure considering? You said you had no pressure, but after a while, because how big it got so quickly, too. Did you feel overwhelmed by it? No. I, I, at the end of the day, this is still just, it's fan fiction. And there's been stories that I've read that mean a lot to me, right? Mm -hmm. um, but in the big picture, this was, you know, if, if, I, if I didn't hit the ending, no one in my real life would <laughs> And I would have gone, oh, that's too bad. I wish I could have done better. Uh -huh. I think it's because I'm a little older. I have a little bit more perspective on that just personally. Whereas mm -hmm. the things that really bother me, that that, that wouldn't be it. So, oh, my. Plus, to be honest, this is going to sound really arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited about writing the end. I thought, oh, man, this is going to be really good. I didn't really think anyone that wouldn't the like was it. <laughs> Plus, I was plus that was the other part. Being able to keep going, uh -huh. I didn't have months to wait where I was worrying about writing a chapter. Right? I didn't. I didn't get in my head about that stuff. So yeah, that like, helped a lot. Like a certain someone. Like a certain someone. Like, but to be honest, it's like a, a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, and I would have yeah, honestly, sure. even though I gave that speech about how you know that stuff doesn't bother me, if the months had gone on, that does weigh on. Me. Yeah. So I got Everyone pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, did you have any help during the writing? It was just me, me, myself, and I. No betas, no what? Anyone? Did you knew? Uh, did you know anyone in the fandom by the time? I knew no one. No Discord. So, no, nothing. So, yeah, I I didn't know anybody. I had joined Reddit. I think I joined Reddit in December of that year. Like a year after, or a month, excuse me, after I'd started, uh -huh. a month or two, and but I didn't know anyone. That's interesting. That's really impressive, also considering how good intent is. Oh my god! It's go, so good. On, go on, go <laughs> on. Do you want me to pick up every single review and read them? Read them. I could Thank do you. that if you want. But it, but it, it, it was a good feeling to be honest with you. I'm not gonna lie. I would never lie about that sort of thing. Um, I didn't write it for that, but I will tell you, having that feeling where you go, I having an idea that you think, or a kind of a story that you think you want to read, and having it resonate with other people, yeah, that is a good feeling. That is a very good feeling. I can't imagine. Like I'm not alone. Then it's so good. Um, considering how how it's your first one, you had no previous experience writing stuff. Like, it's so powerful in such few words. Uh, and it was your first time. I, I know I keep repeating this, but 
people with that was a direct million words of experience in writing don't come close to the level of conciseness and precision that you have in the intent in your first one. Like that's so that was, absurd how good you were. That was born out of two things. Number one, mm. and I think you would probably agree, ninety percent of fanfic is has too many words. They, they too many <laughs> oh words. yes. <laughs> so that's number one. So after reading a lot of fanfic, that was something and when I was talking about man, I wish people would do this. That was one of the things. They're too wordy. They go on too long. Uh, that was number one. Number two, from a professional <laughs> standpoint, I'm an accountant. And part of my job when I have to write analyses or write something for someone who's not an accountant, uh -huh. I know the more words I write and the more technical I am, the more they're going to tune out. Yep. So uh, I, over the years, having to know that, being – Short and sweet with what I have to tell people, uh, in 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 the simplest, easy way for them to understand. I think that kind of helped helped me with that as well. That's awesome. And if you can again, we've all read those read those stories where they repeat how Harry is feeling five times. Yeah. Oh, and his eye caller. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you only have to say it once. If you say it once correctly, you're done. That said, if you say it five times, then you're. The, the reader's going to move on and be rolling their eyes. I didn't want people to roll their eyes. That said, speaking of repeating uh, brilliantly, so uh, <laughs> how, how about the famous Checkers Not Chess? How did you come up with that? So I didn't, I didn't think that would be a thing. Um, that was not planned at all. Um, is it famous? I don't famous? know. It's, it's pretty iconic, in my opinion. From reading Reddit at the time, uh, if you said that in any conversation, people would link it to you. Yeah. So, to to be honest, I, I had a lot of different beats and plot beats planned out, but that was not one of them. But obviously, that whole um, theme of Harry being very straightforward and disarming someone who is used to people not being that way. Yeah. Um, and kind of them, she helped him be more assertive and think things through and he helped her be, be less. more honest and open with her feelings. Yeah. So that was going to be, that was obviously something I had in mind in, you know, since the beginning. That checkers not chess thing didn't come in until I literally thought up the line where she he says something about she had anticipated a chess match and he played checkers and he was very good at it. That, that, was, something, something, that was kind of the line. I can't remember exactly. But even after I wrote it, that was it. I didn't think about, well, that would be a good thing to say multiple times until the next chapter or two later when Harry put her on the spot and she literally thought, checkers not chess, and I thought of it at the time and I met. And that was the time that I went, oh man, that's pretty good. It is pretty, pretty fucking good. I love how Daphne, like in most Gryffindor's little pairings, in most cases, Hefnix, uh, she always uh, it's always about Harry becoming more slithering, while in intent it's the opposite. It's about Daphne becoming more Gryffindorish, and that's such a different dynamic for pretty much every fanfic I've read. I've read so it's pretty unique. That so, so it's interesting because I think first of all. We only know three or four Slytherins, right? We really yeah. only know a few. Fancy, so, the, the trio, and Snape, and Horace. Yeah. Slytherin. And when you think of... I have a whole problem with saying, well, every Gryffindor is this way. Blah, blah. Think about the Gryffindors in, in Harry's year. They're all different. Yeah. <laughs> They're all different. Luna's in Ravenclaw. She's very different. So that's the first part. And... When I thought of Daphne, I thought, well, she's quiet. He doesn't know anything about her. There's a reason she's quiet. So you can either make it she's quiet because she's scheming and she's doing things behind the scenes, or she literally is, these people are morons. I want nothing to do with them. I just want to go to school uh, and move on. And that's what I chose. So. Yeah. But, but they change each other. That's the whole point. In a relationship, it should be both of them bringing out the best in each, in each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, 
how did you come up with the the intent idea? Like, did you use anything for uh, inspiration or when you were writing afterwards, like during the the stories? How do you come up with ideas to continue the plot or for your several one shots? How do you come up and what do you define? What's a good enough idea to keep? So if it's good enough. The, the definition of it's a good, uh, good idea enough to keep is if I keep thinking about it and keep expanding on it. So to answer your question, the things I d decide to write are the ones that I keep thinking about and keep expanding. When I think about them, I keep expanding on them. So for intent, for example, it all started with her helping Harry defeat Voldemort through the scar and love being the, literally being the power he knows not like we know it is. And it just grew from there. And I had the idea, okay. And then when I thought of Daphne being the one to do it, there's so much to work with, with her character, with Astoria especially. Um, so being able to weave Astoria's curse in with Lily and James potentially sacrificing for him, that all was just me sitting there walking, literally walking a dog thinking, oh man, that would work with this and I could do this and And it just keeps feeding on itself as you go along. So, so all of that was done before before I even started. But that but that's how it works, right? Did you come I'm a up? Very, I'm a very I need to get from point A to point B. So what are all the steps that I need to take to get to point B? I see. That makes sense. Did you come up with the Tuso Patronos? At, eh, Tuso Patronos uh, at the time or much later? Uh, I came up with the wording. Are you asking about the wording? I came up with the wording the uh, when I was writing. And so I literally Googled Latin phrases for I am yours. I, that's what I Googled. Latin phrase, I am yours. Fantastic. And I forget what it was. It was too so something. So I just did what JK did and mangled Best it to make it sound like a spell. Yeah. It's good, though. It's really good. It is good, Daz. Are you kidding me? It's really, really good. <laughs> uh, I just farted again. <laughs> I, heard. I, I wasn't going to comment. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to light a little. Uh, how do you, how do you brainstorm? How many hours do you spend brainstorming for any new one shot you, you think about? Because I don't think uh, you're gonna ever go back to a full series again, or do you? Would you? Wow, that was a lot of questions. Where should I start? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> brainstorming, go. Cool. So brainstorming, I couldn't give you an hour. I, I have no idea. But it is what it is. So I never, let me put it this way. I never sit down at, at my desk with my laptop or a pad and say, okay, now it's time to brainstorm. It doesn't work that way mm -hmm. um, for me. I just think about I think things. I think about people like that um, either. Pardon? I don't think that. Works for many people either. It's like no. when you're at school or work, whatever. Yeah. Walking. That's that's the good thing about fan fiction. This isn't my job, right? Mm -hmm. So if I was under pressure and I had got paid for this, I would literally have to sit there and get up in the morning and sit there and go, "Okay, I need to write something." So what am I going to do? That? That's it's it's the opposite of what I get to do. Thank heavens. Mm -hmm. It's when I, when I'm ready to write, I write. Now there are things. Unless you had a, a Patreon. Certain. Pardon? Unless you had a Patreon. <laughs> that was a massive flop. We know that. But someday. <laughs> someday. You know, to be honest, though, your question about will I ever write a long, longer story again? Uh, potentially. Oh. Potentially. That's, that, that's, that's new. I had no idea. Are you just okay. teasing me? Potentially. I will <laughs> tell you, I don't think I will ever write a another uh, happening long term story because it's always going to be intense again I'm very basic so I now have a headcanon uh -huh. of that Daphne right mm -hmm. what Daphne <laughs> is to be that's what I've written um, so coming up with a different story a long form story I can't think of it so when I wrote Brief Encounters it's a one shot uh -huh. the personality is basically the same right Uh, with a different more or less colder, I feel. No, see, see, that's wrong. No, you're wrong. 
Okay. But sure. anyways, <laughs> I I can't. I don't think I'll ever write another happy one shot because I've writ- written that. Uh-huh. I honestly don't think I'll write another harmony long one shot because I've written that as well. But I have another in mind potentially someday. You never wrote any Astoria, right? I Just an intent, so. yeah. No, like I mean, pairing. Astoria with Herring? Yeah. No, I never have. Okay. I I'd imagine like post war, probably. Astoria is great, but now I have a, now I have a. I have a headcanon for her too, so she'd have to be exactly the same, so I don't know if I would write it. What? You could write her exactly the same, but without Daphne. Like, True. doing the, the pairing. Like, could be just, let's say, for fear, maybe fifth during the DA. Uh, <laughs> speaking of sitting down at your desk, when you do sit down, uh, how do you write? Like, What's your process for it? Do you turn on music or do you prefer the silence? Uh, do you write everything in one session, small sessions? How does it work? So it's never silent. There's always music uh, or the TVR. Okay. Preferably sports. You don't so, get distracted by... TV? No, some, something I can't... So anything scripted, I couldn't do it with that. But if it's a sporting event or something like that, or music, that's what I go with. Music is... The big key. Yeah. Uh, do you spend many hours in one sitting? Like, don't you get tired by writing so much? Do you think I write a lot? When you do write, you write quickly and a lot, yeah. Although you don't, you haven't written much in a while. Okay, you didn't have to say that. This was supposed <laughs> to be a positive. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> This was supposed to be a celebration. It is a celebration, Patrick. You're here. You're finally here. <laughs> So, I I would say I write in probably two to three hour spurts. Okay. Uh, at the most, and then I put it aside. So, and typically, so when I ran, when I wrote in ten, I think that was really an anomaly because it came out so fast. Essentially, I would write a chapter in one or two days, and this is one of the best things I learned from the beginning. Uh-huh. Was after I would finish it, I would put it aside and wait for the next day and then go back through it and try to clean it up. Yeah. And if, if I wasn't comfortable, wait another day, take a break and go back and clean it up more before publishing. So, so we'll get to it. I think there's a question of advice for authors, but yeah, one of my biggest things for advice for authors is I know people are excited about putting things out. I know it's never going to be perfect, but if you take extra time, And really clean it up. It really makes so much of a difference. And I think I've told you this before. That was my favorite. That's my favorite part of the writing process. Editing. Going back and tweaking it and editing and take things out and making it sound better. I, uh, I don't remember you better. telling me that. That's nice. That's actually my, my job. <laughs> What's that? That's actually my job. Well, you know, it's supposed to be your job. Uh, If you I did see. your job. I see. Yeah. Your job is to leave little comments. Wow, I really like that. Good job. That's what I like. That's what your job is. And you do a good job of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you weren't around for a long time. Yeah. Uh, Now that's your job. Though. Do You mentioned about the TUSA, but do you spend any, any time researching for stuff when you want to write something? So I research just enough So, one, this is a big pet peeve of mine, and when we're talking about things I wanted to avoid, I hate writers, authors, whatever stories that you can tell the writer is showing off with the amount of detail. Yeah, that's, that pisses me off so much. The they're giving to prove that they know mm-hmm. what they're talking about, um, yep. that puts me off, because, and usually it has nothing to do with what the story is about in general, so... So my thing is I try to make it as I try to do enough research so it comes off as someone reading it isn't going to scoff or go, well, that's not right. That doesn't make any sense. That That's the kind of research level I go to. Um, but I, I don't try to get bogged down in that sort of thing. It, it needs I don't want to take the reader out of it because mm-hmm. they read something and they think, well, they didn't even take five minutes to think about it. But yeah. beyond that. 
I don't worry about it. Yeah. Should I mention the 200 points? You shouldn't. <laughs> okay. Then I won't. But you did. So, to be honest, honestly, you remember at the time, for everyone listening, I got the points freaking wrong at the end of one of the books, and Nows figured it out and pointed it out. I didn't in, figure in the, it out. I remember. Thank heavens. But to be honest, that really pissed me off. Not at you, but that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Uh-huh. Like, that's the kind of stuff that I try to get right. Exactly. So little shits like you <laughs> can hold it over my head. <laughs> but that, that is a good example of that. Too. Yeah. You basically, I, that, that would be a bit ingenuous considering I don't live there, so I don't know. But I know you're very well cared for in the Harmony community. And I know you've helped many authors there, uh, either just by talking or doing betas or providing feedback. Uh, how is that experience for you integrating with other harmony lovers like yourself? So I think I that was one of the best things that came out of writing uh, Paradigm Shift or while I was writing it was joining that Discord. Um, the harmony pairing, and I know we're going to get into it. Mm-hmm. I think there is so much unfair baggage applied to that pairing and the people who like it. Um, and I will, I'm just going to say it. You're, you were a prime example of someone who did that. Sal was another prime example of someone hey, no. who did that, who equate people liking it to liking certain authors that wrote a certain type 10 years ago. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, I have no defense. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so that, <laughs> that, that same sort of thing that I was talking about with intent when I wrote it and I went, I wish there was more stories like this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the same thing in, in a lot of ways, but not totally, was the same thing with the Harmony story I wrote. I, I literally, if you go to Reddit, you can see where I posted a posting and said, can anyone, I knew of one fairly well-known six-year fic. Uh, but I said, can anyone give, let me know if there's any other six-year Harmony fix that are popular? And there were none of were, were none that came up except for the one I knew about. Um, but anyways, back to what you were saying about the Discord. When I started writing it, when I joined the Discord, what I found was I, I was actually wrong when I said, well, there aren't any stories like the ones I like, and I think I'm unique in what I want. Uh-huh. That is what people recognize there, what makes that pairing so good. It's not them dunking on Dumbledore and and uh, making fun of Ron for eating and uh-huh. Jenny giving love potions. It's those those two characters, what they mean to each other and how they support each other. And that 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 discord is what that is. So it was it's nice to be there. Um, and as far as helping others, I I don't know. I think we're all we all try to help each other. You've helped me. So I I, I think that all just goes along with uh, being part of a community. Yeah. Uh, I remember my first Harmony fic. It, it had love potions. It had cheating. It also had soul bomb, and the power of love would be the fifth element. And it was a million point two towards love. <laughs> it was only six uh, year six. One point nice. two million of six year. Nice. Yeah. I also had. Uh, Druidic, uh, Druidic rites, uh, Stonehenge exploded. Well, that's unfortunate. That's a historical place. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah. Also, Hermione and Harry, uh, basically had an army of house elves that they were uh, teaching English <laughs> for some reason. Uh, see, <laughs> you're, you're yeah. trying to, like, you're, Again, you're poking fun at that, but all those dumb, I shouldn't say dumb, anyone can write whatever they want, but all of those tropes, all of those bashing things, that is in every pairing. If anyone who gets paired with Harry, that's there. It wasn't actually bashing. There was no, that, that, well, there really it, was no bashing. Harry, that was surprising. OP Harry. Oh, 100% of the, OP. You know, <laughs> 100%. Soul Bond, all that. That's in every pairing with but for some reason, the Harry Hermione part is the one everyone focuses on as, as well, you know, that's where all those fix are. And that's just not true. 
And it's a shame because, you know, I've been lucky that a lot of people read my read my stuff, and I'm mm-hmm. very grateful for that. The, the Harry Hermione stuff, there's always people who read it, and, and, and I always have those folks who read it, but it's always less than if I write half me or the things I've written yeah, with Fleur. Sure. It's always less. And I think that's a shame, and I'm not saying it's a shame that you know people don't give my writing a chance. I think it's a shame people that there's so people. many readers out there who read Harry Potter fan fiction that have shut themselves off to that pairing that are reading romance, right? They're reading mm-hmm. love stories, and that is the... Forget romance part of it. Clearly... Those two people, especially, you can tell Hermione loves Harry, correct? You yes, one hundred percent. Even if it's platonic friendship, it's obvious she loves Harry and Ron. Right. That's what. That's what I'm saying. So the fact that so many folks have cut themselves off from those stories because of something, percep- some perception they have, or some stories they've read nine years ago, or these famous stories that are that are like that. It's it's silly. Yep. For me. And unfortunate. Uh, but to be fair, it's possible to change. I'm a living proof of it. <laughs> Just saying. It took long. It, it took a genre defining uh, author. Yes. To help you see the way. More like a phrase. I, st- I, okay. I know. I'm just going to say this because you brought up the point saying. I still can't believe you said Hermione had no character progression after the third book. Uh, I remember sitting on my laptop, <laughs> that showing up on my Discord, and being shocked that you would say that. Uh, that was a good day. You're part of the problem. People like you. Sort it out. Okay. You mentioned many times uh, what makes a like uh, Harmony the pairing, but what do you like about Har- uh, Hermione herself? That basically 70% or more, I think more, uh, of their stars are Harmony. Like, what does she do well and what does she do wrong that makes you like her? Because she's so obviously flawed. Everyone's flawed. Should be flawed. So, what are the traits that you love about her? So, there's two parts. One, the reason I write so much of that is because, obviously, I like the pairing, but the books have set so much up. So to to write a one shot, especially with those two, mm-hmm. you already have seven book seven books worth, seven years worth of interactions and relationship build up that you can have as a starting point. So and you don't have so to word from a writing perspective, that's makes it much easier. There's so many ideas that can come out of that. So many different points in time mm-hmm. where you could where you could make that happen. Um, why I like the character is the same reason I like Harry, right? What did he do in the graveyard? He ran. When he thought he was going to lose. Oh. When he was behind the gravestone. He stood up, right? Yeah. For sure. He stood up and fought. And I've always thought this about Hermione as I was reading the books. She was a muggle born with well off parents. And she was extremely intelligent at any point. So I, I always imagine around the second year or third year or fourth year at some point whether it be at Hogwarts or when she was home at the summer she had to think being Harry's friend staying around him is dangerous being a muggle-born is a potential death sentence right she's smart she's clever she knows these things and she didn't she chose not to worry about that she chose not to you know move to another country or try to do something else or distance herself, she did the exact opposite. Harry could die, I need to help her. So that, and that, I have to be honest, when people kind of criticize her as being a know-it-all or bossy or whatever, I said, you're missing the entire point of the character. She ran toward helping Harry. She never ran away from helping Harry because she loved him. And it was the right thing to do, but she loved Harry. And that's what appeals to me. With those two characters, they those, those two characters above everybody else in the series embody that that kind of feeling. So, is that a good an- good enough answer? Why I like yeah, why? for sure. I'm trying to think. Uh, Harry is much more less supportive of her in the story in the books. 
So I, I honestly, I don't think that's true. I, I, I cut Harry some slack. First of all, I'm thinking about the broom a... thing, then about the what's the the name for the the Dobby the house elves act. So two things there. You mentioned Hermione's flaws, right? Mm-hmm. So those are two. So the broomstick thing, <laughs> I don't think she was right in that instance. Uh, no, she wasn't. She should have talked to Harry. Yeah. So this is a flaw that comes up with her multiple times over the books. She did the same thing. I've used this analogy in one of my stories. She was worried Harry wouldn't listen to her about the broomstick, so she took care of it herself. She was worried her parents wouldn't listen to her, so she sent them to Australia. She takes the matters into her own hands, even when she should. She's um, very prideful. Proud? No, see, it's not. See, you have it all wrong, man. You have it all wrong. <laughs> it's a lot about fraud. Think she can do better. It's, it's about not. what? It's about her wanting them to be safe. She's very logical, but she doesn't. So she she does the most logical thing without considering the other ramifications of it. So it has nothing to do with pride. It has nothing to do with pride. It has to do with Harry could die if this jinx is broom. Broom is jinxed. And I think it could be. So I'm not going to give them the option. I'm going to take it away from her. Yeah, that's kind of a bit manipulative in a way. She's, <laughs> she's very prideful. I, I will say this. this. That's the thing. When I, when she's proud, it's about the stuff that doesn't matter. And that's a flaw, right? Um, studies, for instance, studies, grades, the the book, of course, the sixth yep. book with Hermione. Yeah. That was I, I could hear some slack on the sixth book because Rowling was clearly high. So, well, it was her turn, right? And I, yeah. I will say this: I I know a lot of people tear down Rowling for the writing and the plotting, and I've done it myself. I can't imagine trying to write a seven seven book series. I can't even imagine. It was so much easier to write in Pat when I took <laughs> everything she built up and solve all their problems in, in one just tidy one year. Book. Yeah. Yeah, it was much easier. And turning Hermione around in the same year. So <laughs> Book six is so crazy. She's so book insane. Book six is crazy. Book yeah. six makes honestly it makes no sense. <laughs> but uh, her, 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 Harry had been I, I really feel Harry had been wrong in book five. Right? Hermione had been right, so she needed to switch it up and make Harry right about Draco and have some... But if he was right and Hermione... That's the thing. Hermione, when they're working together, that's what happened in Paradigm Shift, right? When they're working together, Things go well. they solve the problem. So Just she like couldn't have three. Hermione agreeing with Harry because they would have sorted it out because she had to write that book. In five minutes. I don't remember how did you, you fix still the... don't get Hermione. I cannot believe you still do not, do, do not get the nature of that character. It's it's very distressing. To <laughs> <laughs> okay, be distressed. Then. <laughs> uh, I don't remember what did you do about the hard crooks on Paradigm. What did I do about it? Yeah, it didn't so... actually finish like the the whole thing. Like it was, we're gonna do it together, and that's it. Wasn't it? Yeah. So he, so he, he still gets hit, and she wrecks them after he gets hit. So he, she basically, she follows him into the. Why am I spoiling all my stories? These people should be reading this. <laughs> <laughs> oh end, yeah, I remember you had them. She goes to the forest with him because they haven't come up with anything else. He gives himself up. He gets mm-hmm. knocked out. She's under the 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 invisibility cloak. Uh-huh. Waits till he's knocked out and Voldemort's knocked out, and then she wrecks them all with beam fire. Sure, yeah. Okay. What do you say, sure? Like, that's a horrible ending. <laughs> <laughs> then he wakes up. That Hold wasn't on. the point of that story, though. The point of that story was the six years. Okay. Um, uh, Harmony is really hate her love, love her hate scenario, like we said before. Uh, did you have any back, any sort of backlash considering you were so big with Hafni before with Pink Tank and then jumping uh, to Harmony? 
No, no, no. I, I've had, I think there were some people who were, I, what's the word, disappointed? Yes. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Like I got a few reviews or people commented that they were disappointed because they really don't like Harmony, but they like my writing. Um, and then every once in a while, someone, like when I wrote Brief Encounters, which is happening. Yes. People were happy that I wrote that again and they made a point of saying that. So, um, <laughs> does it bother you? No, of course not. People saying, man, I wish you wrote more of something, that doesn't bother me. Uh, I, I think, and I, I, I don't know if I've just been lucky, because I know there are awful people out there and awful reviewers and all that good stuff. Yeah. 99% of the feedback I've ever gotten from anyone has always been, even if it's not positive, very respectful. Or next chapter one. Yeah, and I don't mind those either. So... I, it's fine with me. If, if someone's asking that, it's not bothering me. So, um, and even even if they don't like something I've done, if they explain why they don't like it, that's fine. Yep. Um, it's it's interesting because there's been a little bit of an issue on the Harmony Discord over the last couple months with a few authors that were that are I, I will say are loved there story their stories are loved. Uh huh. But. You're allowed to discuss fanfic, right? You're allowed to think, talk about things you don't like. And that's part of what this should be. That's mm-hmm. part of what Discord should be. And, and some of those stories have things. If you're in a Harmony Discord and you have one of them in a relationship with someone else for a while, right? Or a potential relationship that, that's going to cause some folks to say, I don't like this story for XYZ. That is totally fair with me, right? If you're not being an asshole, uh-huh. that's fine. Yep. Um, unfortunately, there were a couple of authors that kind of, again, I can't stress this enough, authors whose stories are loved there, who get multiple praise there. But a few folks respectfully said, I'm not going to read this for that that reason. That kind of left. Um, just like that. They do. Yeah, just like that. And it's hard for me to reconcile, right? It would be like me saying, I can't understand why the folks on the Harmony Discord do not read Daphne Greengrass and the Importance of Attack. Why won't they read my Hafney story? It's really good. If they like my other stories, they'll like this. Because they don't like, you know, they like this pairing. That's why they're there. So, um, if you're not, if you're not an asshole to me, you can say whatever you want. If you, criticize what I write, it might actually help me, which has happened multiple times in the past. So like, um, what's that? Like, like I use too many adverbs. I use the word brilliant too much. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> Did actually, you don't do anymore. Oh my God. Um, I, I think I counted the number of, of brilliance you use on LinkedIn. I'm much better now. Thankfully. But you live and you learn. So after I, I live in quickly, this was, this is one thing I picked up. I have people do things quickly way too often. So whenever I finish a chapter, I do a Google search for the word brilliant <laughs> quickly <laughs> and gently just to see how many times I use it because those are all words that I use too much. <laughs> That's a good way. But yeah. So. Reviews kind of fall into a, a couple categories for me, right? So mm-hmm. number one, they're praising me, which I love, right? So those are great. Got a print the ego. <laughs> so if they praise me, I'm I'm on board. Uh, if they're offering valid criticism or something they didn't like, that's totally and they're not jerks. That's great. Uh, I'll listen to it. And if it's third, if it's something literally that they're never going to like this story, then it doesn't matter to me. So if someone said they didn't like intent because there were no, you didn't see the final confrontation with Voldemort, right? Uh-huh. Or there wasn't enough conflict with Slytherins or things like that. I totally get why you say that, but that just means my story wasn't for you. So that's not going to bother me anyways. And um, everything else they say becomes mute, moot? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a fair it's a fair opinion to have. You just weren't you're not the right audience for this story. Right? Yeah. Right. One of the other big critiques Intent got was I gave the gave away the ending in the first chapter, right? In the prologue, you know, 
you know that they beat him. You know in the summary they beat him. They do it in a classroom. <laughs> Some people said, well, you know, you've taken away the drama. And that was purposeful, right? That wasn't. It wasn't meant story. to be a suspense. It was more yeah, like I'm, I'm not knowing here to how tell that story. How did you I'm get here there? to tell you how it happened and how they came together? So if if you were turned off by that, that's that's a totally fair reason not to read. I wouldn't call it fair. If you're turned off by that, you, you shouldn't read in the first place. No, I'm not. Let me put it this way: I'm not going to get angry at them. I guess I should say. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I'm a very loving, understanding person now. So you would understand that uh, if you took the time to get to know me. Okay. <laughs> of course. You little shit. Uh, you're a very prolific one-shot writer. You have, I don't know, I thought, I said everyone in the intro, but about 12, 15, I don't know. Uh, how do you come up with refreshing and new ways for Harry and Hermione? Because it's usually harmony uh, to fall in love in so many different situations again i think i mentioned it before yeah i have seven books of a relationship to work with so i have all those years in hogwarts and whatever i want to do after that mm. um, i have seven years of that foundation so the elephant for example right the foundation so that's a total story that's that's a muggle Muggle. AU, where there's no magic involved, but I have seven years of the dynamic of those characters, how Harry grew up, how Hermione grew up, why Hermione was drawn to Harry, right? And how she would act and how he would act. Yeah. I love so that fun. It makes it much easier. It makes it... Um, when you have all that, and you have in my, I have a headcanon about how they feel about each other, mm -hmm. and if this was the situation, how would they come together? Um, and it's fun to write those different ones. I have to be honest with you. That's why I love writing those two characters together. I love giving Harry happy endings, and uh, Hermione gives him the happiest endings. Mm. Uh, so and take, you know, <laughs> <laughs> take that however you want. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. She reads a lot. Uh, she reads a lot. Oh, my God, no. Please, no. Um, what do you like most about canon? And what would you change if you could, but without changing the story? Like, if there is something that wouldn't change the whole plot, but you feel it shouldn't uh, exist or have happened, what would it be? Oh, something that man. pissed you off. So I think I this is probably normal. I think the epilogue. Ah, ignore the just, epilogue. The epilogue doesn't exist. So that can't be my answer. No, I'm, is that I'm, what you're saying? I'm taking it. No, you cannot. That's too easy. That's the low, uh, low hanging fruit. So what do I like, and what would I change? Are those the two questions? It's actually one single question. Oh my God, Naz, you're so confusing. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, that that those are two questions. So what I like are all the scenes. Uh, if you've read anything I've written, you know what I like. I like the interactions between the main characters. I like the quiet moments between characters. Um, obviously, the magic's great, the action's great, the plotting's great. But those relationships and what the what the good guys, if you will, mean to each other, uh, that's what I like. If I could change anything... Um, this is kind of a generic general thing. Um, I thought JK was very good at introducing really interesting from the, from the good guys side, really interesting, uh, good characters, entertaining characters, charismatic characters for one book and then doing them a disservice for the rest of the series. So yeah, Remus Lupin. Sirius Black, especially Tonks, those are all characters who are very fun. I, I feel like they had a personality shift after their book in the spotlight, and she had to move them out of the way. Um, and can I have two? Sure, go ahead. She, the The moniker of trust Dumbledore was used way too much, and she should have figured out another way besides that. Um, it goes to the last time. 
like to the last book. It's, yes, it's annoying. It's kind of why bashing fix tend to use that as an excuse to bash Dumbledore. Oh, it's all there. Like yep. Dumbledore is the as a fan fiction writer's dream. I will say that. Oh, for sure. For everything you put Harry through, so. Um, like, like I said, I can't imagine writing these seven books. I think it's a monumental feat. Uh, oh, I have one more. This is the biggest one. Are you ready for this? This is a real one. Have I, you, You've heard this before, but I'll share it with the audience. Having the freaking Malfoy sitting in the Great Hall uh, <laughs> yeah. at the end and, and, and no one doing anything about it. I can I as I read it and think about it now, I still cannot believe that that got through the final edit. Oh, I have one more too. You ready for one more? Sure. Here's here's how I wouldn't write a love story. Are you ready? I wouldn't have my character go on the run for a year, almost die, literally die, see the love of my life sitting in the great hall, and oh, think no. I can talk to her later. That's fine. She's there with her family. I'll just see her later. I wouldn't do that if I was saying that to I, that person was going to end up with. Should have been a harmony. I gave you four, Miles. No one else has given you four, right? I haven't Pretty asked impressive. this question for <laughs> anyone else, so sure. <laughs> you win. Te- technically, I gave you five and you disallowed one. Uh, like I said, whining and crying. <laughs> Enlightening is what I'm doing right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any ideas about Hermione that you never explored it in uh, Starry? So the one the one area that I haven't really done much of is in, and you saw a bit of it in the Fleur pick I did, uh, fish chips and salads. Uh huh. The the Her- Hermione post Hogwarts as she's moving up the ranks. She's a little older. Yeah. And Harry too. I that that's a that's a dynamic that I haven't written that I think I would like to write more of. Uh, as after they're a little bit more mature, they found their feet as adults. Isn't there um, a bit with married with children? There is, but that's kind of like uh that skips to to when they're in their forties, right? And they're yeah. happily married and all that. I'm I, I think that middle part where they're really young, late twenties, sure of themselves, and they've made some changes, right? Uh-huh. Um, they're not; they don't have to worry about everything, and they're they're more confident in themselves. Okay. That dynamic is one I haven't written. That I would like to write that. Itself. That would be in, that would be interesting to to read for sure. It reminds mm-hmm. me of the that story you had me uh, read with Hermione, like Harry's her bodyguard. I think it's called the bodyguard. Yeah, it is literally. <laughs> <laughs> I love that thing. Like I, <clears throat> there were some issues with Hermione and with Harry, but I really like that thing. Yeah, I really like that thing. I think I, the only problem I had it with it, it was supposed to be them. They had they were estranged for ten or so years, right? For them but she years. she wrote their chemistry and their dy- their dynamics so well. It didn't seem realistic that they weren't friends. That's that was the only the downside of that. But that that that's the one that actually sparked me to think about that more. That I would like to write that. Yeah, but I think if it's the same uh, kind of setting that you want, almost a bit too old though. They're in their early forties, late thirties, I think. Yeah, yeah. What I'm thinking of is when like my age. they're twenty five or twenty six. That's what I think I would like to write. Oh, you should then. Go do it now. It could happen. We'll see. Yes. I love doing better for you. <laughs> uh, you tend to shy away from combat or action. Uh, and you mentioned that you usually don't have lots of fighting stuff. But is there a reason why you don't do it? Do you don't? enjoy reading so you don't write or is there any other reason why so it, it really is it boils down to it just doesn't interest me that much i enjoyed it in the books but like i mentioned before i've never been really a part of a fandom so you know lord of the rings or star wars or anything like that those are all things i enjoy mm-hmm. but not for the battles 
and and I like going to a movie and seeing a big battle, but reading reading it, it's it's never appealed to me. It's more about the relationships and things like that. So that's why I don't write it because it just doesn't it just doesn't interest me. Like I, now, I did write a bit of that in Paradigm Shift, and I yeah, have to be yeah. honest, I did enjoy it. Um, Please don't tell me you didn't enjoy it or don't remember it. You didn't um, enjoy it or did you enjoy it? You cut off. No, I did enjoy it. Okay. I did enjoy okay. writing it. It was an interesting exercise. Mm -hmm. But I, I wouldn't want to write a whole thing, uh, thing like that. And and what I feel like when you're writing something like that, what happens is you have to keep topping yourself, right? Yeah, so, it always has to be bigger. Yeah. So, like I did in Paradigm Shift, I can only imagine me doing it that way, where it's kind of everything builds up to that, and then it comes out of the blue, mm -hmm. and that's it. I think you're probably going to, like uh, the book I've been recommending you to read, it's very action-focused, but it's done in a way that's so very concise that the action itself happens extremely uh, quickly. There's a lot of it, but it's in small spurts. So I think you might enjoy reading it. The I'm way doing it. I already, I'm already enjoying it, so I know I will. Like the Hunger Games, right? I really enjoyed the Hunger Games. It, There's lots of action in that. Did you read more of the book? Which one? Red Rising? Red Rising, one? yeah. I have not. Okay, no, okay, okay, okay. No, okay, okay. Just... Ah, I see I took away time because... We're doing this. Okay, I see. I see how it is. Uh, it's very similar to horror games in some ways, for sure. But but all the action has a point. Oh, one hundred percent. I like reading it like that. What? I just don't think I could write it very well very often. So it's marvelous. It's such a marvelous book. Beautiful, well crafted. Ah, uh, I'm not gonna. Anyways, uh. What's the thing that makes a smile the broadest when someone, when you're reading someone else's fic? Harmony, in particular. When I'm reading someone else's fic that's in harmony? Yeah. Uh, what makes you, makes you the happiest? Man, I don't that's know the answer to that. I, don't, I, I, I really like those moments where Hermione lets down her guard. I guess that's, that's what I would say. Define letting down her, her guard, because she's very open with Harry. She isn't very open with Harry, though. That's the problem. So when you think about the books, think about all the things going through her head at all times. Ah, uh, I see what you mean. Um, I have to be strong. Okay, I've, she spent all summer thinking about, okay, this is what I have to do, and this is what he needs. And she goes to bed at night thinking about, this is what happened today, and this is what's going to happen tomorrow. Harry's name came out of the goblet. He's not going to want to go to the... He's not going to want to go to breakfast. He's going to be horrified of all the attention. I'm going to get toast for him, and I'm going to meet him in the, in, in the common room. But I need to be strong, and I need to tell him that I'm on his side. You see what I'm saying? You're all of those such things, a though. nerd for remember the exact same thing. Although yeah. it was for toast. I remember that toast for Draga. Uh, Damn it. So, so what brings me joy? I guess this is the answer. So she has to spend most of her time focusing on Harry. And there's a reason for it. And this it's not Harry's fault. Harry's not being selfish. He's got genuine shit going down every year that he has to worry about. Mm -hmm. Being able to turn that around and have Harry focus on her, help her, and have her let her guard down and let him, that's what I like. Fantastic. We talked before, you hinted many times that you might have something in the works. Uh, is there anything you're working working on right now? And what's the the maybe thing you have in the future? I'm not working on anything. You know this. I've kind of uh, burnt out. I don't know what the word is. So two things. Number one, I need to finish Sliding Doors. So that's not bad. Yes. Because um, I really do enjoy reading that. The other thing that I think I might do is oh, uh, Paradigm right. Shift. Hmm. I always, I was never happy with the final chapter. Um, and if I had it to do it all over again, I think I would have ended it um, at the end of the year and then done something similar like I did with After the Credits, uh -huh. where I wrote kind of bits and pieces of afterwards. 
So I think I might do that with Paradigm Shift, everything that led up to that battle with Voldemort in after. So we'll see. That would have been yeah. that would be very interesting. Like it, it, it would allow us to see how you imagine that world be shaped up by the what happened with them. Yeah. So, so I, I never. I don't want to write a seventh year fic that follows. I think the Horcrux time was an interesting read in the books, but it's a slog to rewrite that same side, sort of progression. Uh huh. So I never want to do that. But bits and pieces and how it would change. That's what I. That's what I wish I had done, and I think I'm going to go back and do that. Um, and as far as the other thing, that's an entirely different pairing oh. that I'm going to share right now. <laughs> you are, just with Not, me, though. I'm t this is what we call a tease in the industry, Miles. This is a tease. Okay, you tell me later, then. Well, we'll see. I might want to tease you, too. We'll see. You do that, I start, I don't know. I delete the recording. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hold, I'm gonna hold this podcast for ransom. That's it. In between that, if they if there's a good uh, prompt on the Harmony Discord, I'm sure I'll write that. And I will tell you this: this is definitely happening because I can't stop thinking about it. That thing I just wrote with Sirius going forward ten years. Uh huh. I'm definitely going to write it at yes. least once or installment of that because I can't stop thinking about it, and I have a specific idea in mind. Yes, yes, yes. Fantastic. I'm I'm surprised you haven't uh told anyone that we're do that we're doing the recording. What do you mean? On this card. <laughs> I didn't believe it would happen now. So oh uh, come you. on. This has been how long have you been doing the podcast? Uh six months. So for six months, this is what I've heard. You're next. You're next I never TV. said that. Man. Well, you know, I can't do you next. I have to do this person next because they have a chapter coming uh, out. Or, you know, they're really down in the dumps or they need this boost. And I just had this cycle <laughs> of you telling me it was, I was going to be next. That's so and much bullshit. Being pushed off. So I never honestly thought this would happen. That's so much bullshit. Oh my God. It's in all podcasts. It has to be true. That's, that's how these things work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't okay. edit this out. Okay. Let the people know the truth. <laughs> the people, sure. <laughs> You're rabbit fans. Um, how do you prefer receiving feedback from readers or other authors? Uh, I don't care. Reviews, DMs, Discord, it's all good. I love talk. You know this. I love talking about fanfic. Yeah. So I love dissecting it. So here's what I will, here's what I will say. Uh. I think if you're giving feedback to someone, There's different places you should do it that it's appropriate. So if I, if I, you should never be an asshole. <laughs> That's the <one. laughs> yeah. but, but that goes without I'm saying on, for anything. If I'm talking about a fanfic on Reddit or a Discord, like a, just a generic Discord or a fandom Discord, you can say whatever you want. Just don't be a jerk and don't be insulting. <laughs> That's totally fair. Um, if you're, if you're seeking out the person, I don't, I don't think it, like going to Sal's Discord and telling him you didn't like his story or a, an author's Discord, I think that's crazy. If you're going to leave a review, you should be, you should be kind and give your comments as nicely as you can, even if you have criticism. Um, but if you're on a Discord and it's a fandom Discord or a pairing Discord, you can say whatever you want. Just don't be a jerk. I, I know on the Hafni Discord there's people that don't that aren't huge fans of intent and they've given their reasons and that's totally fine. I have no problem with that. Um, that that's the that's the nature of this. If you put it on the internet, people are allowed to have their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Um they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> of course. But they're allowed to have those thoughts. Yeah. Uh, considering you're an accountant, I would have expected you to care more for numbers. Wh which numbers are you talking about? Reviews, favorites, fe uh, oh, follows. Yeah. It's so, it's so interesting. I'm never, I remember when I wrote Intent, I was thinking when I started, I thought, man, it would be really cool if I got a thousand favorites. That's what I thought. I thought, oh man, that'll be cool. Um, And I got a thousand, and it's it's cool that they go up. 
I really love the numbers. I love that they go up, but I never worry about it or think something's a disappointment. Like you mentioned elephant, right? Mm-hmm. That has my lowest, I think, my lowest save count, follow count, review count. It's Muggle AU. I, I released it somewhere else and then posted it as its own separate thing. It's got its lowest thing, and... low, low, the lowest numbers of everything, but that doesn't bother me. It's fine. Uh, I it bothers like me. The numbers go up. It, it really bothers me because while I love pretty much all of your stories, Elephant for me is the best one of everything you've written so far, and even in Ten, which is mind-boggling, fucking amazing. Uh, Elephant like cleans house basically. Compared to the it rest. It does clean house. Now. It's fucking it amazing. It's, it's fucking, fucking awesome. Amazing. And it's Goddamn so... Goddamn right it is. Jesus Christ. So <laughs> nice, sweet, depressing. It's perfect. It's... You love... That's why you like it, because it's depressing. <laughs> yeah, I'm a angsty bitch. What can I say? <laughs> so I, I never set targets for numbers. I just like see. I like seeing them go up. That does make me happy. I like checking back in and mm-hmm. saying... Seeing where they're at. That's where I like it as far as numbers. I will tell you this. This is a little secret. Uh, oh. As far as tracking numbers, I don't really track them or get bothered if something goes low or not. I will say uh, on fanfiction.net for intent, especially in Paradigm Shift as well, I do like watching. I have a specific filtering by romance uh-huh. that I like watching it when it goes above that I think are not very good. <laughs> <laughs> Sal does the same I thing. Do, I do feel a little sense of victory when I when I knock one of those off. I'm not going to lie. That does happen. Sal does the same thing. And he, every time that <laughs> happens, he sends me a message showing it. <laughs> but beyond, like, it's never like I've, I, I've never gone, oh, I can't believe that only has 300 pages or anything like that. Nothing like that. Uh-huh, I, uh-huh. I'm happy for anybody to read it, so... When I first started writing my own, I thought I was going going to be a lot more focused on the numbers. Right now, I don't even have a clue how many I've got. And I really don't give a shit. Yeah, that's how I am. I <laughs> like seeing it go up. I really do like it, but it's not like I could tell you. Like, I checked the other day, because I was talking to Rose about it, and it turns out I already have more favorites or follows or reviews. One of the three. Than her, than her fic, which is like almost two hundred thousand words already. When mine has wow. fifteen. That was nice of you to dunk on Rose like that. Wow. No, I'm not dunking. She she so has a much twice. better fanfic. You did it in your conversation with her. I'm fucking. You did it in this podcast. I'm not fucking nice. dunking. Nice, savage. I'm, <laughs> sorry, Rose. <sighs> Fuck you. Do you plan on going original in the future? Uh, do you see yourself as a full-time writer? If I ever came up with a good enough idea, I th- I would give it a try. Um, like I said, with intent, I came up with that idea, and it just grew and grew and grew and grew, uh-huh. uh, and I wanted to write it. Same with Paradigm Shift. But like a if second I, time... Sorry. Go ahead. But like, like a second gig sort of thing, like... Again, if I ever came up with a good enough idea, I would for sure try to write it out. I think what I'm very good at kind of limits me. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm good at taking what JK wrote and tweaking it and adding a bit to it, but leveraging everything she had, right? Mm-hmm. And writing stories out of that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, obviously the weakness there that maybe translates to original writing is that world building and coming up with that. Um, I would love to come up with an idea that I thought was original, um, but I just haven't. And, and you know, I'm a little bit older. I have a, I have, you know, I have another job. Yep. So it's not like in my head I'm never thinking, wow, I could really make this a career. So I don't really, I'm not motivated that way. Uh huh. Um, so it's more for honestly, curiosity and um, seeing if you can do it. Yeah, and fun. It's fun to write. And sure. I, I'll be honest, it's opened up all these folks that I know now, which is great. That's what's the best part of out of, out of all of this is. 
So it's never been about, you know, I'm trying to hone my craft to go pro. I would love that if I came up with an idea. Mm -hmm. Um, I would start writing it tomorrow and I would would have you beta it. But sadly, it hasn't happened yet. Sure. Well, who knows? Maybe someday. Maybe someday. I never thought I'd write anything, so. I honestly think you could really do well because of your style of writing, how concise you are already. And uh, as I I reread Intent, I saw many things that could be trimmed out in a very, in a already very concise story. So, yeah. <laughs> are you criticizing Intent? Intent yeah. right now? Is that yes, what's happening here? Exactly. I am being honest. Unbelievable. How many of these have you done? Reviews or podcasts? Podcasts. Uh, nine, I think. How many times have you shit on the writers of the other ones? That's what I want to know. If there were zero, uh, zero times, answer. but you know what else they <laughs> in the other ones don't exist. <laughs> they aren't you, so fuck I'm, you. Yeah, it's, and it's totally fair, by the way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What do you wish there was more of as far as tropes and characters or even more, more different pairings for you? So I mentioned this on the other podcast we did. There, I cannot believe there's not more Harry Katie, mm-hmm. but I've already spoken on that. Listen to the other podcast. You can hear it. Yeah. I wish <laughs> we talked about it a lot. I wish other authors would take a stab at Harry and Hermione. I wish they would do that. I think I wish more people would read it. I wish more people would write it. Is there um, an author you like so much their stories that aren't Harmony that you wish they would try it? I, I wish <laughs> our friend Tal, uh-huh. she wrote one, and it's very good, but it's very tortured and angsty. Oh, very much so. Of, of anyone, having her take a stab at uh, Harry Hermione, as much as she's grown, and in, honestly, that... The, the kind of thing that I'm talking about that I would want to write when they're in their 20s, uh-huh. mid-20s. Can you imagine her writing that? That's yeah. what I would read. Yeah, especially, especially doing ministry stuff. and not, it, it would be awesome, for sure. Yes, so that's my answer to that. You know, oh, that's never going to happen. So. Oh, I know it's never going to happen, but you just asked me what I would like. No, no, I know, no. I, I'm just being sad about the fact that it's never going to happen. And I, and, and, um, as far as, uh, the tropes, I mentioned this in the other one, but I'll repeat it again. Dimension traveling as oh, opposed to I time traveling. Mm, I love it. I wish there was more of that. I think that is a fascinating thing to do to put Harry in a, in another dimension with those characters where they're slightly different. I love, um, or vice versa, having them come here. I think that those are always interesting. I know there's, there's a lot of, uh, tropey things that happen when the dimension problem happens. But my favorite thing is always when Harry meets Lily for the first time. Right? That's I a, love that's that. That's a perfect example, right? Yeah. I love and those, that. And those fics where he meets Hermione and he doesn't, she doesn't, they're not really friends yet. Just mm-hmm. things like that. I think those, those are all fascinating things. And of course, meeting Lily and James. Don't say, see, you're like everyone else. You shortchanged James. You see... Uh, he has two parents. I know. Lily is my favorite. I used, I used to not give a shit about James. Actually, I, I used to not like him at all because of his uh, bullying ways when he was a teenager. Uh, but there's a fic. I don't remember the name. I think it's called... Lighting Doors? Hope. It has a really good James in Slide No, no, it was so much before that. Good. It's probably definitely Sliding Doors. Shut that up. one has sh- 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 really up. takes that character from canon and ah, really brings it alive. Your James is great. Shut up. <laughs> uh, it was called A Long Way From Home, I think, uh, where Harry is very angsty, but he travels to another world and he meets James and Lady and everyone. And James um, is a medic, a healer. Hmm. And he's much more interesting than Lily. The relationship Harry has with this James it, instead of Lily is much deeper, much much more interesting and real, I feel. And it made me like James. That single fic has made me like James by itself. 
Did you ever read Storm of Yesterday? You did. I right? did. It's fantastic. Yeah. 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 I but think I told the, you this, right? It's yeah. a Harry. It's Hermione James, but it's my favorite Harry Hermione thing. <laughs> yes. Because of how how much she's devoted to him. Yeah. How much he recognized. But any, but that James is good too. That James, the here James it is. And serious and the, Storm of Yesterday. The is whole fantastic. the whole cast is amazing. The the yes. story. It's really good, really, really good. But that's time travel. That's not dimension travel, but that's yeah. lifetime. But that's similar enough, I guess. Yeah. Considering how everything changes. Um, what about the least favorite ones? The things you would throw away or wish there was less of, a, as far as tropes, characters, and parrots? So I will. I'm going to. I'm going to take the whiny. Or I'm going to take the weak way out of this uh -huh. and say. You know, 10 years ago, I would have given you probably a different answer. But now I think people should write and read whatever they want. Any trope can be written well or it can be written very poorly. Um, so if people like something and they want to write it, they should do it. Having said all of that, <laughs> um, uh, the Weasley bashing especially, Ugh. I feel like none of them deserve it. I get, I get the Dumbledore bashing like we talked about yeah. before. It's all set up in canon. That's all there to do. <laughs> you also cannot do it. Like you can also make it uh, criticize him and make it interesting, like you did in Intense, or like uh, like Saul did in ITT, for instance. But those are his flaws. See, I don't see that as bashing. That's just identifying it's him. His exactly, flaws. it's him. It's not bashing. But in Jenny, in particular, the people at Harmony, if they listen to this, some of them are going to be annoyed. She really does nothing wrong in the series. <laughs> Um, she gets hammered in in Ron too. Ron, Ron, Ron. There's reasons for it, obviously. I love um, Ron. I know you're not a super fan. No, no, no. I like Ron. I really like Ron. I think here's the problem with Ron. This is this is his problem, right? He walked he's out. He's in. He's in the three. He's in the trio. Mm -hmm. it, it's like we talked about with the Beatles, right? <laughs> George is great. <laughs> yeah. George is great. Yeah. He's not John or Paul, right? He's in a he's in a, he's in a band with John Lennon and Paul McCartney. So, as great as he is, he's not as great as those two. He's always going to be um, behind those two as far. In in J.K. wrote him that way, right? In the books of the trio, Harry and Hermione are the all stars. You would agree with that, right? One hundred percent. Yeah, actually, I, 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 I it doesn't make him bad. I barely say. Makes, sorry, go. It makes him better than everyone else in in the school, pretty much. He stood by Harry, right? Mm -hmm. um, but when you're comparing him amongst the three, he comes in third for me. I wouldn't even say that Harry is the star in some ways compared to Hermione, because Hermione solves everything. Uh, the, see, that's not true either. See, you boil everything down to this simple. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just say I'm lame, for It is you. just not true. It I'm just baiting you. She is amazing, though. She is amazing. Way she too amazing. amazing. Mary Sue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who has helped you the most with your writing career? And who is your biggest inspiration? Both in the fan fiction world and the traditional literature. So you know what I sorted out because I'm you know this I'm a big fan of the podcast you know this right uh huh regardless of being on it I always enjoy listening this is such a setup for you to get your your guests to answer oh you're the you're my greatest help now so you're the one who's helped me the most well first fuck you and I you're hate right. to say that and wait second? I'm not done wait it gets better oh duh. even dis despite your nefarious reasons for asking these questions uh huh. As much as it pays me to admit it, <laughs> you are the fucking answer, and that really is annoying to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you really helped me. Now, as far as inspirations, I was, I, I don't, I've never been a big fan of fantasy. We talked about this, right? Mm -hmm. I mentioned it earlier. I, I like Lord of the Rings, but it's not it's nothing crazy to me. The as I was thinking about who resonated with me and who's maybe influenced my writing that's a writer. Uh, have you ever heard of Nick Hornby? No. So he wrote About a Boy, the book about a boy, 
High yep. fidelity. He's an English guy. He's probably no in the 90s and early 2000s <laughs> when he was popular. Uh-huh. If you read his books, you would understand why, how it's influenced my writing. It's very sarcastic, sarcastic, funny, um, wholesome, introspective. The, the only difference with with his characters and mine are his his leads are a bit more dysfunctional and more bit more of assholes, right? I've made them better people, uh-huh. but that kind of tone uh, in how he writes. Um, I think that's who's influenced me the most. Sounds very interesting. Un- unknowingly, I did, I hadn't even thought about it until we. I knew we were going to do this, and I had to really consider it. But it's definitely him. That, that's really interesting. I'll try to look it up later. Try to remind me to read because, like, have, have you ever seen the movie about a boy? I don't think so. Watch that movie. That's my recommendation to everyone. What would you say is your one thing that has influenced you who you are as a person? Be it a fanfic, a book, a movie, anything. To the point where your life has changed completely. And why do you love that? So, our parents and everything like that's out, right? So, we're just skipping that. Yeah. Which is fun. Honestly, and this is so corny. Oh, my God. It's so corny. It is, honestly, the Beatles and Paul McCartney specifically. I uh, uh, want to say I'm surprised, but I'm really not. So why? Well, I I started listening to them when I was 16 years old mm-hmm. and fell in love. So I went. So they've been. So I think it's because I'm older too. When you have something that's been a part of your life for 30 plus years now, and it's this thing that I found when I was 16 and devoured it when i got older i played it for my kids and my kids now know it uh-huh. um and one of them is still recording albums and i'm 40 you know i'm in my mid to late 40s and he's almost 80 it's hard to put into words what that that feeling of having someone in your life for 30 years um that isn't a family member or something yeah and especially uh, paul mccartney He's like a good dude. Like, obviously, if you're one of the Beatles, they were jerks back then because they were arrogant and all that kind of stuff. But seeing how he's lived his life, seeing how he was married and brought up a stepchild and treated him as their own. Oh, I didn't know. Just things, just little things. Because you're a fan, you learn more about him. We've all, how many people have we admired that are in the public eye uh-huh. that as the years go by, you realize they're not so great, right? You're yeah. Jerks and awful things come about, out about them. It's kind of been the opposite with him. Whereas I get older, all the stuff that I couldn't have cared less about before, I admire for him more. Uh-huh. Plus, his music's amazing. So all that together. So I that's the answer. As corny as that is, that is honestly the answer. I wouldn't say it's corny at all. And secondly, the second second is... Daphne Greengrass in the importance of intent. <laughs> <laughs> because it's so good. It's so good. I'm just kidding. Elephant's better. <laughs> Why do you have to tear down my writing? How am I tearing it down? I'm saying that something so great as intent, elephant's still better. And you it's still yours. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> For fuck's sake, how am I tearing it down? You dumb fuck bitch. Thank you so much. Well, there you were. <laughs> that was definitely tearing me down, but it's fair. <laughs> if you could give our listeners some advice about becoming writers, what would it be? What do you think is the best thing to focus on as an obese writer? So, and we're talking, I'm just going to talk about fanfic or in general, right? I don't so, know. So, I, I think I mentioned this a long time ago, but it's unconsciously what I did, and I think it's the best advice I could give. Think about the stories you like. Think about what you like about them, whether it's fanfic, movies, whatever it is. Think about the things that really resonate with you. But also think about, in those stories, the things that you don't like, things that could have been better. Um, There's so many fanfics, and we've talked about them, where there's the relationships in the dialogue or whatever it is that I really love, mm-hmm. but they went on too long or the plot came became too convoluted or all these things, in my opinion. Let me preface it by saying 
in my opinion, what I want to read. That they still there's certain things that they missed, and that's what I took away from them. I really love the dialogue. I really love the relationship between. Them. But it should have been half as long, and they should have cut out all this, and it would have been way better that way. Mm-hmm. That helped me so much when I was writing Intent, and it still keeps helps me when I'm writing to think about what are the pitfalls that I want to avoid that I don't enjoy. Because at the end of the day, you should be writing for yourself. I guess that's the other thing. If you're writing because you want to get lots of fav- favorites, and so- I make a lot of jokes about it, but they really are jokes. Don't write for that reason. Write, write what you want to read, and it'll take care of itself. And don't, like I said earlier, don't fall into the urge to just post. I know it's fanfic. I know it's not your job, but take a while back. Take a while. Take a step back. Really look at it. Try to make it better because that <laughs> process of getting it on paper and then really refining it is so, it's so fun to do. I can't explain it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't put into words, even though I'm so good with words. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Anyways, I can't put into words what that feeling is like where you've written something and you tweak it just a little and it and it just transforms it. On Take the on the other hand, one advice you give you've given me many, 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 many times is don't overthink it. Don't Oh for sure. Don't overthink it. Just do it. Well that that's that's talking yourself out of it, right? That's different. Like yeah. oh man. At the I if I I think that's probably why I didn't write till I was older, or, mm-hmm. because when I was younger, it goes back to like when you're in school. I would never raise my hand, right? If I even if I knew the answer, I wouldn't raise my hand. You didn't. If I got it wrong, this is me being a stupid teenager. What mm-hmm. if I got it wrong? People laugh at me. When in reality, no one gives a shit. No one cares. They just want to go. <laughs> they don't want to be in this class. They're barely paying attention. <laughs> No one is going to care if you get an, an answer right or wrong. And even if they do, they're going to forget about it five minutes later, so it doesn't matter. Um, we're anonymous people on the internet. If somebody doesn't like your story, it's not the end of the world. For sure. They'll write it. And post it. And uh, post it. Do you have any co- recommendations, stories? Fan picks or just in general? Both. You said about a boy, but. Awesome. So I would watch the movie about a boy mm-hmm. and read the book. The book is good. Okay. Um, I have a, be, to be honest, I forgot about this book, but it is one of my favorite books of all time. And it's originally written in Portuguese. So you should read it too. Which book is it? It's called All the Names. All the Names? By whom? By Jose Saramago. Ah, Jose Saramago. That, along with um, uh, Nick Hornby, that mm-hmm. book has influenced of what I think about literature and how I write more than any other book. I see. So that's my recommendation. And from fanfic perspective, two, two, oh. Storm of Yesterday, let me get the name because I, I, I forget it. Shyamalani. Storm of Yesterday by Shyamalani. And for Harmony, <laughs> I hate this name. She knows I hate this name. <laughs> yeah. She has the worst freaking name ever. <laughs> the Boy Who Lived. The Brightest Witch and The Boy Who Wasn't by Dragonfly117. If you like my writing and you like Harmony and you haven't read that, read that story. I'm not reading the name again because it's too long and too confusing. Uh, so, um, okay. So, uh, I had some friends help me come up with some questions that they might want uh, answered. So, <laughs> if anyone this wants you, to, uh, this is where you start insulting me more. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. If it, but it, you're it, blaming your so-called friends for it. Okay. Yes. Fair if enough. anyone wants to skip, go ahead. It's pretty much basically irrelevant questions. Um, uh, what color does your keyboard light up? What's that? What color does your keyboard light up with? Uh, my keyboard doesn't light up. No. I have Amazon Basics because I'm a basic bitch. So next question: <laughs> If you had to name, <laughs> if you had to name your gigantic, gigantic, ginormous ego, what would you name it? Hmm. What would I name it? 
Hmm. That is a great question. Let me think about it. what would I name my ego? Is that the question? What would yes, I name my ego? Your ego. Your I would name it. Ego. I love the Yankees. <laughs> so I think I would name it Derek Jeter because he's the greatest. Derek I, Jeter. That's the name of my ego. I have no idea who that is, but okay. He always came through in the clutch. <laughs> Okay. All of favor, just like my ego. Uh, if you had to kill, please tell me. Oh, okay. Thank you, God. I was checking if I had set to record or not. Did you? I did. This is gold, by the way. So because I paused really... like when we had the break. <laughs> oh God! Continue recording, please. Yes. Um. If you had to kill Hermione in a post harmony story, how would you do it? If I had to kill Hermione, is that what you said? If you had to kill Hermione in a post harmony story, how would you do it? It's never happening, so I'm going to twist this and say if I ever wrote that, mm. it would be her dying on her deathbed at 120 years old. Oh dear. And Hermione, Harry flashing back to something. So that's my answer. That's how I would kill her. You're not going to get me with that amateur question. It's never happening. <laughs> Next question. If you had, <laughs> if you had to remove one band member of the Beatles uh, from history, who would it be and why? It's Ooh, yours. from the Beatles. That's right. I re I forgot you this question. So it's George, again, right? If, there, if, if there's anyone listening that's a Beatles fan, I apologize, but it would be George. Mm -hmm. John and Paul, you can't you can't uh, get rid of them. Of course. Um, and Ringo really was. You've seen a little bit of the Get Back documentary, right? Uh, heck. Everybody loves Ringo. Ringo brings them all together. Everybody's nice to Ringo. Ringo's nice to them. He was the backbone. So I'm sorry, George. I love you, but he's sort always it out so by yourself because you're out. He looks so sleepy every time, all the time. Dude, Ringo. Ringo, yeah. It's always like, I want to go to bed. Please let me go to bed. Stop talking. Stop arguing. Let me go to bed. That's see, how I, I, see. I see I see it the other way. I I see it. Here's what I think it is. This is what I've always thought. He's a really good drummer. Uh -huh. And he's a really nice person. And he realized early on, I can't believe I'm in, the, in a group with these two fucking amazing songwriters. This is amazing <laughs> and he's a really good person and he's a really good people person so as the years went by he kind of just realized that his job was to do his job play the drums keep the peace when he could and when he couldn't he would go over and have some tea and let them <laughs> do their nonsense while he waited until they were done and he was very good at it Uh, when you compare me to Ringo, <laughs> I, I see what you, uh, I hear what you're saying. And it's oh a my compliment. god, it's a, exactly what happens when it's a compliment. When you saw and tell go <laughs> with, the, with your stupid ways. I'm Paul, right? Just say I'm Paul. You're Paul. Thank you. And of course, Paul is. Who cares who they are? I'm Paul, <laughs> okay. you're Ringo. That's all. That's all we need to say. <laughs> Not forever, baby. Uh, how much do you love DJ Lemahio and why do you love him so much? <laughs> Could you hit me with that again? Did I pronounce him wrong? No, I liked it. I liked how you said it. I'm not making fun. I really enjoyed it. Hit me with it again. <laughs> DJ Lemahio. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> how, is, how, how he said it. <laughs> Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Don't fuck yourself. What am I saying wrong? <laughs> no, no, no. I liked it. How I'm not much, saying anything wrong. I just how, liked hearing it. How much do you love DJ Lemahieu? <laughs> Why do you love him so much? Oh man, how 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 do you how do you equate how much you love the sun rising every day? I don't. I how do you sun. equate loving the soft breeze on the nape of your neck? Really scary. Music. How much do you love the sound of a baby cooing? These. This is how I love DJ Lemahieu. Limahio. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> Next question. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was so dumb. Oh my god. If you were a vegetarian, 
Why would you... What? What did they write? If you were a vegetarian, why would cheese burst be your favorite pizza topping? <laughs> well, it's it's this is obvious, right? Because I, the word molten cheese is in it. Molten. I'm a wordsmith. We've talked about this. How good I am with words, right? Genre defining. Yes. Yes. Cheese burst has molten cheese. I have no idea Done. what cheese burst is, but okay. Molten cheese. Next question. I. Okay, I'm not gonna ask. Uh, <laughs> what is your favorite stretch of all time? <laughs> I love a good groin stretch. <laughs> obviously, that's the go-to. Obvious. That's the obvious answer, right? The groin stretch is the yeah, obvious of answer. Course. Of for course. several reasons that I'm not going to go into. This is a family podcast. Is it the um, I also, but to be honest, I love a good back stretch. Like you've been sitting at your desk for multiple hours, you and know, he and you get up way. and you raise your arms above and you know you stretch out. Yeah, I'm doing that right now. Back stretch. That's a solid answer, right? That's a solid stretch. Next question. What does it feel like being the third best writer in your group of friends? <laughs> <laughs> I think what style who wrote this one. <laughs> um, if I go by the numbers, mm. I'm a numbers guy. We talked about this. Mm -hmm. I'm a numbers guy, right? Yeah. Numbers don't lie. That's a that's a famous saying. Numbers don't lie. I'm number two. So you this are? question is incorrect. So you need to revise your question and ask why how does it feel like to be number two? So how does I'm it feel like being a number ask, two? I'm gonna allow you to ask the question again. Thank you. Correctly. So go ahead. Thank you, Patrick. You're very kind. What does it feel like being the third best? No, no, no. You have to fix the question. The answer what is does it feel like best. being the second best writer in our group of it friends? It feels fucking amazing. And why is that? Because Tal is number three. <laughs> <laughs> Thoughts on the Bob, Nobody, No Crime by Taylor Swift. <laughs> what? Thoughts... <laughs> Thoughts on the Bob, Nobody, No Crime by Taylor Swift. You know what you know what I feel about this song, right? We've talked about it, right? Yes. It's yeah. hard for me to explain it. How do I explain a sunrise? <laughs> oh my god. How do I explain the breeze <laughs> on the nape of my neck? How do I explain explain the beauty of a baby cooing? <laughs> Next question. <laughs> which man do you <laughs> which man do you think is actually responsible for Taylor Swift's success? Ah. Uh, see, I knew you would you you love the patriarchy. You know that? That is your thing. Uh -huh. um, someday you're going to get over it. Okay. It's <laughs> if anyone listens to this, they're not going to know what the You know you make this joke about Taylor, but I know what you're doing. Mm. I know you're saying it as a joke, but you really think this. She writes her own songs. I see. You know, she, she plotted her own career. Mm -hmm. Don't credit the patriarchy for something she did. Okay. How much Pope do you like in your OG? What a great question. When I was younger, because we're all different when we're younger. Oh, there's a backstory to it. Okay. When I was younger, it was strictly no pulp. My dad loved, like, the normal pulp. Uh -huh. So that's what we always got, and I hated it. Okay. So whenever we got the no pulp, it was like this little gift to me. <laughs> But as I've gotten older... I've realized maybe I need to expand my horizons. Mm -hmm. So I've grown a little. Now I'm a low pulp guy. I like a little pulp. I see. You're mixing Next it up. Next question. Next question. Has Sal Tao ever compensated you for your work in their studios? And are you still on probation? So definitely a probationary. The probationary, I think, somehow, if as long as I'm on probation, it precludes them from having to pay me. Or acknowledge me in any way. Mm -hmm. My significant contributions. <laughs> okay, Th those were. So the answer is <laughs> the answer is no. They haven't compensated me. I'm still on probation and always will. But I will say this: uh -huh. I'm I'm never leaving because I love. There, I unlike them, mm -hmm. I don't tear people down. You build them. I up. love their writing, and I feel it's an honor. Mm -hmm. To be part of that group and be give my little 
additions to Healer Harry. I feel like it's a gift to me to be able to do that. And to Hermione. And I would never point out that I'm second. <laughs> and Tal is last. I would never do that because it's an honor to be part of that group even though Tal is below me. <laughs> Next question. Uh, of the dumb ones, we're done. Thank you, Patrick, for chatting with us today and thank you, listeners, for sticking around. Next time, we'll be having a special podcast with some new and returning guests and I hope to see you again. Keep reading. Thank you, Nas. Down with the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> Keep reading and reviewing and also your love. You could really make the day or even make a new friend. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Nas. <laughs> <laughs>